So we got 91 days. My God, that's easy. We'll sleep when we're dead. And the Democrat crowd goes wild to we'll sleep when we're dead. Not that there is a wave of fanaticism that has overtaken the Democratic Party with the uh, child genital mutilation and free college and free health care and driver's licenses for illegal aliens and open borders and just to name a couple of things that Democrat Governor Tim Walls has brought about as the chief executive of the once great state of Minnesota, now a loony bin. And if you go to Senator Tim Walls' Wikipedia page, which has been altered repeatedly in the last 24 hours, go to his congressional website last time I looked, He lays claim to having been a command sergeant major in the Minnesota Army National Guard, the command sergeant major of the 1st Battalion, 125th Field Artillery Regiment. And when it came time for his unit to deploy to Iraq, he ran for the hills. He resigned. He quit. He bailed. He got out of there. He's uh, not a war hero by any stretch, uh, but liberals are going around saying that he's a proud military veteran, even though when the day came, uh, he absconded, he ran. The Washington Post has a fluff piece today, and that's being generous. Walls has a long history with China, but he's not, quote, pro-China, end quote. That's the headline. From the propagandists, and nothing but propagandists at the Washington Post. And they had Rebecca Tan, T-A-N, and Vic Cheng writing the story at the Washington Post about Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, Vice President Kamala Harris's newly announced running mate, has had an unusually long and involved relationship with China. They should call it Communist China, but they don't want to be harsh one that Republicans have seized upon as a line of attack, but not the Washington Post or the news media, in the face of rising antipathy among voters toward China. Really rising because, you know, they murdered 75 million of their own people, and they're communists, and they use child slave labor, and, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, that's okay. Democrats are okay with that. They love slavery. They are the party of slavery, after all. Both Republican and Democratic leaders have promised to further toughen the country's stance on Beijing if elected to very stark and different visions for the path forward on planet Earth. And the Democrat Party, they're in bed with the totalitarian elites around the world. Turns out the Washington Post types Republicans, and again, it's not a telling of Waltz's relationship with China, it's an attack on Republicans who are trying to make known his relationship with communist China, the most murderous regime in the history of humankind, but that's okay. Republicans have tried to suggest that Walls, who moved to China in 1989 to teach for a year, would be soft on Beijing. Why would anybody think that he'd be soft on Beijing? He moved there in 1989 to teach for a year. I believe he is... 60 years old now, and uh, doesn't look very good for 60, I've got to say. It looks uh, much older, and and he behaves like Hillary Clinton, uh, pointing uh, at the crowd and with his mouth hanging open and his eyebrows raised high. He probably keeps hot sauce in his purse, too. But uh, he moved to China in 1989 uh, to teach for a year. Isn't that uh, fascinating? So what was he? He was in his uh, 20s, 26 or 27 or something, whatever. I'll have to do my gazintas uh, later on old he was. But he, uh, in his 20s, moved to China for a year to teach. Why would he be teaching in China? What's that all about? That's kind of fascinating. He first encountered China when on a Harvard-run Teach Abroad program in 1989, spent a year teaching English and American history at Foshan Number 1 High School 
in the southeastern Chinese province of Guangdong. Guangdong, you know what that means? I, if I translated that, I couldn't say it on the radio. Guangdong is, uh, never mind, I'll just move on from there. China was coming, he says, and that's the reason I went. I don't even want to start interpreting that one because that's that's too weird. But uh, listen, he uh, he loves China. He's a China guy, and they're the communists. They're the leading communists in the world, and that's okay. And they say that he has visited. How many times has he been to China? Well, the Washington Post says that his uh, education, travel adventures, and coordinated summer trips to China almost every year through 2003 – As of 2016, according to Walls, he had visited China about 30 times. About 30 times. Now, I've been to Hong Kong myself, but I don't feel the need to, you know, go to communist China. But Harvard, full of commies, and uh, at Harvard they've had to uh, expel people on their staff because turns out they were stealing secrets for communist China and so on. And uh, also, Walls famously said, and I have the audio for you I'm going to play today, he, uh, he also said that um, socialism is neighborliness. At the end of the barrel of a gun where you torture, throw people into gulags, and prison your political enemies, harvest organs. The Democrats harvest the organs here, too, of the unborn. They think that's just great. Uh, This Democrat Party is more like the communists and the fascists of the 20th century than than ever before. In fact, they might be more like the communists and the fascists of the 20th century than the communists and the fascists around the world are today in other countries. Amazing stuff. The Washington Post published a picture of him uh, meeting with the Dalai Lama. Hey, Lama. There will be no tip. But the, uh, the, the Democrat Party is spinning the propaganda machine is full tilt, full tilt. And it is, make no mistake, the most powerful propaganda machine in the history of the world. Just a moving. <laughs> just, uh, just amazing. So let's see, you know, he moved there in 1989. Uh, let's see, 1989. When did he move there? Wasn't Tiananmen Square in 1989? Wasn't that? Isn't that when Tiananmen Square happened? Because I think the massacre there... Um, that was, uh, uh, you know, that the Chinese communists were slaughtering people by the thousands and, uh, he decided, Hey, this is a good time to move there. Why was that going to be a problem later on when I, uh, run for vice president of the United States? Yeah. What month in the Washington post, they didn't look into that. The year of Tiananmen square. Did he move there right after? And Harvard said, Hey, good time to go teach English and American history in Guangdong, uh, in communist China. And that was, uh, 1989. Does he approve of the Tiananmen Square massacre of students yearning to breathe free? Not a big deal when you're a Democrat. It's, uh, it's not a problem at all. Good, uh, good point. Good point. Man, oh man. Now, let me, uh, let me, uh, uh, mention a couple of important, uh, things here. He um, he left his unit when he was supposed to be rising to the rank of command sergeant major, the most exalted of all non-commissioned officer ranks, and um, and I got the news media is smoothing this over for him too. It's an a- absolute disgrace. But I'm I'm looking at the big board over here, and I've got a very patient, a very patient uh, person who commanded a unit, and I would like to go to uh, let's. Uh, go to Richard calling from Manassas, Virginia, on line five. Richard, thank you for hanging in there. You are on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, I, uh, I, my unit, I, I deployed with the 1st Infantry Division, 1st Brigade, in uh, September of 03 through September of 04. I commanded 179 soldiers over there in the, the Al Ambar province in Ramadi, Iraq. And I can just tell you, He's a coward. And, well, first off, he was a sergeant, command sergeant major. He wore the rank, but because he didn't fulfill the obligations to retire as a command sergeant major, he lost the. So he retired as a master sergeant, but he did walk around. He's kind of like the 
uh, army rank version of a drag queen. He wore the rank, but he really wasn't uh, the rank he was because he didn't complete the training at the command sergeant major school. Uh, but, yeah, he, he bailed on his unit, and when the Iraq was going on, at that time, field artillery units were being converted into basically infantry units, um, motorized, driving around, doing patrols just like the infantry and the armor folks were. And, yeah, it was it was tough sledding for those folks. But, you know, to just there and, and just tap out before he ever, you know, and, and they want to make, uh, you know, make fun of Trump because, oh, he dodged the draft because of bone spurs. Well, you know, that's one thing. But to actually be wearing the uniform and then when it comes time to actually serve and defend your country, go, no, nah, I'd rather join, uh, run for Congress. To me, that just – that's just yellow belly cowardice to me. I don't know if you've uh, seen the um, the article that was put out by two of his um, military colleagues um, in in a uh, it's called the West Central Tribune, and this is uh, quite an interesting article because they wrote it and published it in November of 2018. 2018. This didn't come out yesterday or anything, but. Uh, yeah. Two of his uh, his colleagues in the Minnesota National Guard, uh, Tom Behrens, Command Sergeant Major, retired, and Paul Herr, Command Sergeant Major, retired, uh, got together and published a letter about what a fraud he is, and they published it in the, the West Central Tribune. Tim Walls has embellished and selectively omitted facts and circumstance, circumstances of his military career for years. And they write, we, retired command sergeants major of the Minnesota National Guard, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is uh, a most exalted status, command sergeant major, correct? Uh, yes, the command sergeant major is what they refer to enlisted advisor to commanding officers all the way up to four-star general. The, um, the chief of staff of the Army has a command sergeant major that's his senior enlisted advisor. But I also tell you, there's a lot of deadwood and you know, slackers that fail up to become sergeants major. Uh, it's not. It's like every rank in the military. You got good ones. You got bad ones. And it sounds like to me, he was no good, or else he would have. Uh, you know, the the NCO creed, the first line: "No one is more professional than I." It's very unprofessional to ditch your unit and your soldiers. You're the you're setting the standard for all the NCOs, all the enlisted members, because, oh, we got to actually deploy. And I'll tell you, my wife asked me, do you have to deploy? We had a six-month-old son, and I said, yes, I have to deploy. This is my time. I've served for X number of years. I don't remember at the time how, how many, but it's my time to go. And when the, the, the call came, that 3 a.m. call that they always want to talk about, Tim Walls refused to answer the phone. Amazing no, stuff. There. Now, is this, and then he uh, he lays claim, and you're right, he is not entitled to, uh, he was not entitled to retire uh, or claim that he retired at the rank of Command Sergeant Major, and he was reduced in rank, which is not technically demoted, but he did not achieve the uh, the rank of Command Sergeant Major sufficient to retire at rank, even though his websites and he has claimed on the campaign trail and so on that he did retire as command sergeant major. Now, that it's it, does that constitute stolen valor, Richard? Uh, you know, that's, you know, not really. I mean, you know, in fairness, no, he wore the rank. He was promoted to that rank, but he did not complete the obligations to hold the rank uh, as a as a permanent, they, uh, a lot of times uh, at that time they were promoting people early on the promise that they would go to the Sergeant Majors Academy and fulfill the obligation because you have to have the schooling, time right. in service, time in grade, and he did not do that. Same thing with a lot of officers uh, go to OCS. They have to complete their degree before they can actually become like a, a, a captain, That's O3 right. uh, officer. So That's right. He, he should not ever say he retired as a command sergeant major. He That's can right. say he wore the rank, which is a true story. All right. Okay. 
Yeah, but that's right. It's like going to officer candidate school but not completing officer candidate school, so don't go around claiming that. Uh, Richard, God bless you. Thank you, and thank you for, for the call and for all that you've done for being a great, proud American and a brave American. I'm saluting you. Thank you, Richard. I'll salute you right back. Thank Thanks, you. buddy. Thanks. I've got a lot more on this. I do have the letter from the two sergeants major from the Minnesota National Guard and what they have to say about uh, the Democrats' new vice presidential candidate uh, and what the news media is doing to spin this and to lie to us about it. You get the truth here. You know that your feet, at the bottom of your legs, they support you throughout all of your summer adventures and beyond. Are you tired of shoes that promise comfort and support but fail to deliver? Introducing G-Defy Shoes with VersaShock technology. Unlike ordinary brands of shoes, G-Defy offers superior shock absorption and trampoline-like energy return, helping to provide relief from foot pain, knee pain, ankle, even back discomfort. Uh, I love mine. My best girl's got a pair. I've got a pair. They're great hiking around the city in them. Uh, whether you're an athlete, a busy parent, just always on the go, g Shoes offer the comfort and versatility that your feet crave. So say goodbye to discomfort and hello to unparalleled support this summer. Every pair of g Shoes come with two free supportive orthotics and a special lateral stabilizer to help improve your stride the way you walk or run. As a listener to this show... Because you hang with me, you get to enjoy a special summer offer. Visit gdefy.com and get $20 off your order of $100 or more when you use the code CHRIS, C-H-R-I-S. That's G-D-E-F-Y, gdefy.com. And don't forget to use the code CHRIS for $20 off your order of $100 or more. Experience the ultimate in summer comfort with GDefy shoes. Visit gdefy.com today. Yeah, this guy is, uh, he's in shambles already. Uh, they just know that the press has going, they're going to just, they're going to uh, uh, lay down beneath him to cushion his fall. They're going to lie and spin. The news media is the only reason the Democrats ever win any election. Oh, and I got a squad member, member lunatic that lost her uh, coming up. Oh, and an update on the, the, the you know, the guy with the horns on... Uh, January 6th, I got an update on him. You're listening to The Chris Plant Show. Now, Kamala Harris has not held a press conference or even done a sit-down interview since she, uh, you know, by hook or by crook, became the Democrat Party's nominee without getting a single vote anywhere in the country stealing 14 million Democrat Party votes that were cast for Joe Biden in the primaries because the Democrat Party is destroying democracy in order to save it, hasn't held an event. And uh, we, you know, we'll see, I guess, at some point with Tim Walls. We will see some kind of an event. A QAnon shaman coming up. This is the Chris Plant Show. All right, the, uh, you remember the QAnon shaman, as he was mockingly known. I believe he described himself that way, and he carried a cardboard sign on January 6th at the U.S. Capitol that said, Q sent me, uh, part of an Internet um, silly conspiracy thing that doesn't go anywhere, but you know that's what the Internet is for, I think. Well, the headline, the headline is, Feds must return spear comma, horned helmet to January 6th rioter QAnon shaman, judge rules. The New York Post has the story. A judge has ordered the feds to return the spear and horned helmet worn by the man who touted himself as the QAnon shaman when he stormed the Capitol during the January 6th riots. I, uh, I seem to remember a video of him walking very calmly uh, through the place and talking to police and police opening the door for him and stuff. But 
That's okay, stormed the Capitol. Federal Judge Royce Lambert ruled that the Department of Justice needed to give back Jacob Chansley's unmistakable outfit. That's what the judge called it, the unmistakable outfit, after the convict served his 41-month sentence for his part in the deadly 2021 mayhem. It was deadly in that Ashley Babbitt was shot and killed uh, while unarmed for the alleged crime of trespassing by Lieutenant Byrd of the U.S. Capitol Police. Without warning, shot and killed the 12-year U.S. Air Force veteran, a young woman, um, a patriotic woman shot and killed by an, a racist killing, a black cop and a white woman. Uh, but the Democrats applauded. Uh, yay, kill more. Shoot, now they love cops shooting unarmed women because the Democrat Party is demented. The judge wrote, Mr. Chansley has completed his prison sentence and much of his term of supervised release. Now, I'd like to point out 41-month prison sentence plus supervised release. If you look at the videos, he walked through the Capitol. Uh, Nobody was sentenced for assaulting and injuring 160 to 180 police officers in a three-day siege of the White House when Donald Trump was living in there forcing the evacuation of the president and the first family where they set the church of the presidents on fire. Uh, and, uh, you know, nobody was sentenced to uh, a, a week in prison for that. Nothing at all. But 41 months he walked to the Capitol. It's the two-tiered system of justice. It's undeniable to anybody with two brain cells to rub together and any integrity. Mr. Chenley has completed his prison sentence, much of his supervised release. Now he has moved for the return of his property, seized and still held by the government, including his spear and helmet, Judge Royce Lambert wrote in his decision. Now, it was a crazy day, and it uh, wasn't really unlike uh, 150 riots that the Democrats held of their 600 or so riots over St. George Floyd, who died of cardiac failure because of all the fentanyl and methamphetamine in his system, but he's a hero of the Democrat Party. The judge said, Since the government has not established that it still needs these items, the horned furry helmet and the spear, as evidence and has not sought their forfeiture, the court will grant Mr. Chansley's motion. Now, Jacob Chansley, 37 years old of Arizona, effectively became the poster boy for the riots after images of him went viral, showing off his painted face as he wore what the government called a horned coyote tail headdress. How do they know it's coyote tail? And carried a six-foot pole with an American flag. How dare he? The Democrats, they carry Hamas flags and Palestinian flags. They burn American flags. They don't carry American flags. And an American flag zip-tied to the shaft with a metal spearhead fixed to the top. The Democrats brought M-80s, which are an eighth of a stick of dynamite, threw them at police all over the place. It'll blow your hand clean off if you clutch it in your hand. He was also seen holding a megaphone as he cheered on the rioters, but it's unclear if that device was also seized or returned. Jacob Chansley was among the first rioters to enter the Capitol building and allegedly cursed out former Vice President Mike Pence when he was hauled off by law enforcement officials. So he gets back his furry helmet and his spear, um, and he did 41 months. Did he assault anyone? Did he did he stab anybody? He cursed out Mike Pence. Um, that's actually allowed. You're allowed to do that. The First Amendment protects that. The Department of Justice initially claimed that Chansley's spear and helmet should remain in federal custody, describing the items as, quote, used to project strength during the assault on the U.S. Capitol, end quote. That's what the government said. Uh, What about the people that brought um, uh, crates of frozen water bottles to throw at the police, uh, used to project strength? Uh, Boxes of M-80s, an eighth of a stick of dynamite that they're throwing at the police, were those used to project strength? during the assault on the White House, for which no one was sent to prison. But Judge Lambert rejected the government argument, saying that because there is so much documented footage of Chansley at the Capitol 
And there's video right here I'm watching. He's walking through very calmly. Police open a door for him. Uh, he's not punching anybody, hitting anybody, stabbing anybody. His property is of little utility for an investigation or prosecution. Chansley filed the motion to get his property back in February of 2023, and it's only taken a year and a half to get it back. Now, um, it's kind of an amusing story for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that uh, he may be able to sell these things at auction or something for, you know, a million and a half dollars or something because it's kind of a kind of a big deal uh, part of that story, I've got to say. Interesting stuff. So he gets his his headdress back, he gets his spear back, took a year and a half of legal action to get his property back because the government made up some BS language uh, in an effort to uh, keep it from him. And uh, who did he assault? I mean, it's, it's, if he assaulted somebody, should be held accountable for being assault, for, for assaulting somebody. But, 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 two systems of justice. All right, let's get to some, uh, let's get to some audio here. Um, also, did you hear, you know, that the uh, Governor Shapiro in Pennsylvania, who's Jewish, and he wasn't chosen because he's a Jew. Juden, as the Democrat Party says. The Jew will not be the vice president. Or, 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 raus, raus, schnell, schnell. The Democrat Party. Stephen Lloyd uh, posted on uh, Twitter, if it's any consolation, the Harris campaign did give Governor Shapiro a gold star for his effort. <laughs> and here's a picture of a, a yellow star of David from the Nazi concentration camps and Kamala Harris pinning the yellow Star of David on Governor Shapiro's Jewish lapel here. Um, <laughs> because they're so much like Nazis that it's almost impossible to say. Right, let's get to some audio here. We've got a bunch of audio, as you might imagine. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, let me see. Okay. <clears throat> now let's go to, uh, let's go to number two. Number two. I think we... Uh, um, well, we'll start at number one. It's just such a, a, a stupid uh, Tim Waltz, the Democrat governor, now vice presidential running mate of Kamala Harris. Um, and he's uh, vulgar and racist as Democrats always are. And how often in the world do you make that bastard wake up afterwards and know that a black woman kicked his ass and sent him on the road? That's uh, I don't th- he's talking about President Trump. How do you make that uh, bastard know that uh a black woman kicked his ass and sent him on the road. Um, because you're a racist and your party is racist and you're anti-Semites. And, you know, the only thing that matters about her is that she's a black woman. So is Cori Bush. She hates the Jews more than most, that Cori Bush. And Kamala Harris, if she were a Republican, she'd be called an anti-Semite for not picking Josh Shapiro. Much more important state. You know, the last time the Democrats lost the state of Minnesota was when Richard Nixon won the state of Minnesota. Even Ronald Reagan, when he won 49 states in his re-election, his second election to the presidency, Ronald Reagan lost the state of Minnesota, and that was the only state that he lost of our 50 states. So the Democrats don't have to worry about losing Minnesota There's no reason to pick the governor of Minnesota, but he loves rioters and looters. And and when he was defending and protecting the rioters and looters, Kamala Harris was raising money to get the rioters and looters and arsonists bailed out of jail, assaulting police officers. No 41 months in jail for them, like the, the shaman, the Q shaman. No 41 months in prison for them. All right, let's go to uh, number two. And this... I uh, I lifted this from my Newsmax show last night, uh, which airs at 10 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, Chris Plant and the Right Squad on Newsmax, Newsmax TV. Uh, and uh, this is the montage that we put together that the great producer Carly Camito put together, wonderful New York producer for Newsmax. She's just great. Uh, put together a montage of uh, Tim Waltz um, and... You know, him as governor of Minnesota. Listen, listen to this. Don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. The sure. trans community is, is as 
terrified as they've ever been. We've seen attacks across the nation, even here in Minnesota. We have to be much more aggressive about making sure that folks are protected. How often in the world do you make that wake up afterwards and know that a black woman kicked his and sent him on the road. He talks about this wall. I always say, let me know how high it is. If it's 25 feet, then I'll invest in the 30-foot ladder factory. A society that does not put equity and inclusion at the center of it is certainly going to uh, eventually uh, come to the places where we're at. We need to stop congregating. We're going to close the bars. We're going to close the restaurants. We're going to close the places where we gather. It's done. <laughs> room at the St. Paul Armory erupted after the governor's signature made driver's license for all the law of the land. Should Minnesota be a sanctuary state? Uh, if the definition of that is that the federal government um, enforces immigration law and local law enforcement enforces local law, then yes. Should cities be allowed to be sanctuary cities? Yes. Yes. Should illegal aliens get free uh, tuition, not in-state tuition, free tuition at Minnesota universities? Yes. Should illegal aliens get Minnesota driver's licenses, which would give them the ability to register to vote, uh, even though they're not legally entitled to? And the answer is yes. Should illegal aliens get free health care, even though the legal residents and taxpayers of Minnesota do not? And the answer is yes. And socialism is neighborliness. Socialism has murdered more people than any death cult in the history of the world. Radical Islam is the Red Cross compared to socialism, the most murderous death cult in the history of humankind. Isn't that amazing? A great montage from you know, my show on Newsmax last night. Wonderful stuff. And if uh, the, the, uh, Donald Trump builds a wall 25 feet high along our southern border, he's going to invest in 30-foot-high ladders because he's an open borders, corrupt, anti-American, death to America, lived a year in China, communist China teaching, visited China 30 times, uh, says that socialism is neighborliness. It is murder is what social and theft and criminality and death on fire. That's what socialism is. Equity and inclusion, any society based on equity and inclusion will steal everything you have and harvest the organs of your children. He also uh, signed into law uh, gender reassignment surgery for children down to kindergarten level while keeping it a secret from the parents. Keeping it a secret from the parents. No parental approval. That's stealing your children and, uh, you know, genital mutilation. We used to frown upon that sort of thing. Now let's go to uh, Kamala and Waltz. Uh, it, it's Walls. Let's go to Kamala, Kamala and Walls. Um, this is the lie they're peddling. Two very stark and different visions for the United States of America staring us in the face right now. It started like this. Tim and I have a message for Trump and others who want to turn back the clock on our fundamental freedoms. We're not going back. Nobody wants to turn back the clock on it. We want to save and preserve fundamental freedoms. The lie is so big, no one would dare not believe it. Kamala and Walls. It's like a matchup between the varsity team and the JV squad. Yeah, that reminded me of when Barack Obama said ISIS was the JV squad. And then they kidnapped and murdered everybody and decapitated everybody. And then Donald Trump wiped them out because they were left on his plate. Uh, when the Democrats did nothing to take on radical Islam other than funding Iran with tens of billions of dollars. Kamala and Waltz, Philadelphia, yesterday. His running mate shares his dangerous and backward agenda for this country. Yeah, he served in Iraq, and you evaded Iraq, uh, you slime bag. Uh, There is more of them coming up from Philadelphia yesterday and more. More as well. You know, Eden Pure is having their famous BOGO deal. Buy one, get one deal on thunderstorm air purifiers. When you buy one Eden Pure thunderstorm, you get one for free. No matter how many you buy, you get an equal number for free. You buy two, you get two for free. You buy five, you get five for free. You see how this works now. The thunderstorm will help completely eliminate any odor in your home, in your office, even the worst odors, pet smells, cigarette smoke, cooking odors that your mother-in-law whips up. You know, the O3 molecules seek out and destroy the odors, even behind and beneath furniture. Nothing can hide from the thunderstorm. 
But right now is the time to order. Eden Pure's buy one, get one free sale is for a limited time only, so don't wait. With thousands of five-star reviews online, you can find them yourself. We've got two thunderstorms at home. You know it works like a champ. People are buying several for around the home and even as gifts. You know, for somebody, it might be a hint. Just go to EdenPureDeals.com and use the discount code CHRISBOGO, C-H-R-I-S-B-O-G-O. That's EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is CHRISBOGO. Yes, sir. Yeah, they lie and they lie, and the media sits back there smirking and smiling, touching themselves, touching each other, and then lying to all of us about it. I've got more coming up, plus J.D. Vance and President Trump from this morning. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. There's only one Chris Plant, The Chris Plant Show. Well, the lunatic left and their anti-Semite pals are rejoicing today. The Washington Free Beacon with the headline, It's Walls, baby! Let's go! Anti-Semites rejoice after Harris snubs Jew. The squad and other Hamas sympathizers were all in for Tim Walls. The leading anti-Semites rejoiced on Tuesday after Kamala Harris chose Tim Walls, the left-wing governor of Minnesota, to be her running mate. Many relieved that Harris did not pick Josh Shapiro, a Jewish governor of Pennsylvania, whose views on such issues as Israel's right to exist had prompted, quote, concern, end quote, among some Democrat voters. According to ABC News, Representative Ilhan Omar, winner of the 2019 Anti-Semite of the Year Award, posted a celebratory emoji alongside a photo of herself with walls. Representative Jamal Bowman, another lunatic squad member, lost his primary recently, radical left-wing member of the squad, also thrilled that Harris picked a non-Jew to be her running mate. It's walls, baby. Let's go. He's a complete lunatic, Israel hater, destroy them all. Keith Ellison, well-known anti-Semite, former congressman and former attorney general, excuse me, now attorney general of Minnesota, said there's no better choice. And uh, Washington Post columnist and radical left-wing racist Karen Atia, Team Trump, excuse me, (laughs) Team Walls. (laughs) I say team and I go right to Team Trump. Team Walls. (laughs) It's our time. She wrote with a typographical error. (laughs) Democrats hate the Jews. What's up with that? 